Hello there, everybody. This is a short series on how to create pseudocode. Now, you might be asking, what is pseudocode? Is this a new type of language? The answer is no. Pseudocode is a way for us to define what we want to do in a program before we actually write the program. Now, you might ask, well, why would we do that? Well, the better you plan, the easier it is to create your application. And so we want to do this process of creating a design, figure out what we need to do before we actually start trying to do it. Now, if this sounds a lot like a flowchart, you're actually correct. Flowcharts and pseudocode both serve the same purpose. That is to create that design before we start coding, to let us check to see, hey, is our logic correct in our algorithm? Now, what's an algorithm? If you remember correctly, it's just a series of steps we need to perform in order to solve a problem. It doesn't even have to be a computer problem, technically. But in our case, what we're going to look at is going to be solving coding or computer types of problems. Now, you might think, well, why are there two different ways of doing this? Flowcharts and pseudocode. Well, flowcharts are very good if you have a smaller program or if you're highly visually inclined, you like to be able to visually see step by step by step. Pseudocode is going to be much more of what we call a natural language. In our case, English. If you were doing any other country that has a different language, then you would use that language. There's nothing special about it being English. It's just a matter of, is it easy for you and other people to read, understand and verify. The goal being that you take this to a person and you say, hey, is this what needs to happen? They may not understand how to code it, but they can read through the steps and go, yes, and they can sign off on it. And so that's what pseudocode is. It's just a plan for how we're going to write our code in a natural language. That way we can show it to non-coders and have them verify their algorithm or the steps to solve our problem is correct. Now, one thing I want to let you know is you do not need any type of software actually to write pseudocode. When I started doing this years and years ago, we wrote it out on paper and that's all you technically need. Of course, in today's technological world, it'd be silly to do that. So you might write it in something like Microsoft Word, or you might write in something simple like Notepad or another text editor. I'm going to be using a tool called Visual Studio Code, which I actually use for writing my code, but I'm going to write my pseudocode in it as well for a couple reasons. Number one, it's very easy to read. It has a black background with white text. It's a little bit easier, especially with a larger font size. So it shows up better on these videos and it's easier to look at if I'm staring at a screen for a large amount of time. Do you have to use that? No, absolutely not. Use whatever you find to be easiest. And you might be working in a computer lab where they don't have that, and but they have Notepad. Then use Notepad. Or maybe you can log into the internet and go into your Google Docs. That's fine too. The goal is to write a natural language to solve the problem. Find a tool that you do that, and then we'll get started. Check out the next video on how we're going to start our very first simple application and write in pseudocode.